Hi everybody, welcome to Trusty Huckster Mercantile. This is my first uh, pre-recorded video that I've dropped in a while. Uh, primarily just because I've got other things that have been going on. If you've been following my channel, you might know that I have been in rehearsals for a production of Matilda the Musical, which if you're watching this video while it uh, goes live or when it goes live, I will be on stage at the time uh, this is happening. So. Uh, while this had normally been a the Thursday evening where I was doing a late night, which I could do after rehearsals, uh, tonight I can't do that. So I have asked some of my friends to come together and create a, an evening of shop hops. No, a shop hop of drop sales. I still haven't figured out what to call it. But that is what has been going on this evening. So if you are watching my video uh, at the my quote unquote, new normal time of my later uh, late night st slot, you might not have noticed that there were uh, 10 other videos that uh, participated in this evening that I put together. So I will uh, drop a link of all of those videos in the description, And but I do want to do a quick little shout out of them uh, now because I do appreciate them all joining together and helping me out and kind of, you know, doing something a little bit different. Uh, several of the resellers that are involved actually have never done uh, drop sales before. So this is kind of a new experience for everyone. So if you've been doing them in order, you started the evening with Beth at Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties. Then we had Mimi's Treasure Cottage, Vintage and Vinyl, Kiwi's Collectibles, This Overstuffed House, Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter, Catherine Young, Fat Bird Finds, Pamela Blanchard, The Antique Nomad, me and there will be one video that will go live after uh, mine finishes and that will be uh, Sean from Skunky Junk. And so again, evening's pretty much already spent out, but if you go back and watch some of the videos, pay particular attention to the comment section, you most likely will find items are still available in those sales. So if you are not familiar with a drop sale, uh, it has the concept of the live sales that have become very popular on YouTube. However, I'm not live. Well, I'm alive, but while you're watching this, it's not live. So what you will do is I will show you my items and pretty much the rest of the channels we're doing about the same thing. Show you the item, give you the price, tell you how to identify it, whether it's a number or by name. And then instead of having a live chat, which would happen during a live sale, you will just go into the comment section of the video and claim it and YouTube will post those in order that they were received. So you can watch this one. If you see something that you're not that interested in, fast forward, because the entire video has been uh, popular, has already been posted. So if you want to see what I have or what all the other channels have, you can actually fast forward and get through the video a little bit faster than real time and uh, get a sneak, um, a sneak peek at what is available for sale, regardless of your internet speed. So that's the one benefit is if you have a slower internet speed, these videos go live for everyone and you can go ahead and claim them. So that's all you need to do for mine. Go into the comments, uh, claim your, uh, claim the, which item you want, give me the number of what you're uh, claiming and then send me an email, but you must claim in the comments. I cannot do claims via email because if you send via email and somebody else claims in the YouTube comments, I won't be able to know which one came first. So you must claim in the comment section so we can see the public order. But I do request that you send me an email so that way I also have notification. And if you've never bought from me before, send me your uh, address because all the prices I give are not including shipping. So I will customize, combine anything that you, if you purchase more than one item tonight, I will customize that and uh, combine shipping, but I do need to add the shipping costs and I won't be able to do that if I don't know where you live. So uh, that is all I've got going tonight. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the live sale. All right, well, sort of live sale, drop sale, whatever we wanna call this. All right, this, if you watch some of my uh, haul videos, this is actually an item that I had posted in a haul video uh, probably about a month or two ago. And just a quick tip, if you ever see something in a haul video you're interested in, don't wait for the live sale. Just drop me an email and you can probably claim it right there. Uh, but this is an item that I had picked up and it's not something that I typically pick up. I do like pottery and porcelain, but this is Greek pottery. I can't say I know anything about it. I still don't. What's nice, it is very well marked uh, and it happens to be from the year of my birth. So I think that was why it was calling to me. But for something of this age made in 1970, it's in excellent condition. There are no chips, there are no cracks. 
There's no crazing. It's not a high glaze. It's kind of like a matte glaze. So there's really no, there's no crazing or anything on it. Um, there's no chips to the paint. There's nothing. It's absolutely pristine condition. It's a beautiful kind of almost a neutral with the browns and the blacks. Beautiful piece. It actually was set up by somebody when they made it, they put a hole in there. So somebody did put, whether the maker or somebody else, kind of strung a plastic, um, well, I guess it's fishing line. It looks like it's just knotted. But they, you know, so it's a little bit easier to hang on the wall or prop it on a little plate stand and you put it in a vignette. It's got some nice, really, again, neutral colors. But what I love is the design in the middle. It's dated 1970, but that's screaming a mid-century modern motif with those gazelles uh, facing each other in the middle. So it's just great symmetry, great, uh, appear just a, a really cool appearance. And it's just a great looking piece of a nice uh, vintage age. And you can have this for $15 by giving me number 38. $15.38 for the Greek pottery. The next item also was shown, I think I showed this in a haul video. It might've been on Instagram. It actually was part of a larger purchase that I had made. And the purchase that I made was actually for me. And this was an additional piece that was put into it that I thought was pretty cool that I wanted to make available. So what we have here is this little like leatherette wallet that says Newcastle Airy number 933 Fraternal Order of Eagles. Now I am not personally familiar with the Fraternal Order of Eagles, uh, but I'm assuming it's like an Elks or a Moose or you know, one of those lodge organizations. But it's a little wallet that opens up and has a little plastic um, sleeve in the middle. And inside is the membership card of the member of the fraternal, uh, what did I just say? Fraternal Order of Eagles. So this happened to be the membership of H.L. Gebhardt. And it cost him $3 to be a member in 1935. So I love just pieces like this. It's just a cool piece of ephemera. If you have an ephemera bowl, if you just collect you know, union organizations, union memberships, membership cards, it's, you know, it's been punched because it's been uh, paid. It's just a cool little set. Um, and like I said, it would look great in a little ephemera bowl. It would be even, it would be cool framed. You could have an instant relative. Find a picture at a garage sale and then put it right next to this and suddenly Mr. Gephardt is your uncle. Just a cool little piece. I Again, I picked it up as part of a larger lot, Got kept what I liked, and I kind of felt like this was something somebody would probably give a home. So I thought it was kind of a cool little piece for eight bucks, and you can have the Fraternal Order of Eagles wallet for eight bucks by giving me number 34. $8.34 for the wallet plus the ID card. Uh, next piece is also part of a larger lot, but a different larger lot. This one I just thought was kind of fun. It was a collection of items that I actually will be using for resale. Um, I haven't figured out what I'm doing with all of them, but I kind of culled through the collection that I purchased and I found these individual pins. And so we, we have the hashtag bring back the brooch. In my case, we're also bringing back the hat pin. Uh, these are just little novelty pins. So it kind of has a little you, know, you see kind of a little safety pin kind of back to it. This one's super lightweight. Um, I do think, eh, no, maybe it's metal or maybe it's plastic. I thought it was metal, but maybe it's plastic. Um, you've got this little, what do you say, a sailfish? Also with a little simple uh, pin back. But uh, that one actually has, no, it just has a C clasp to it. Uh, the, there's a frog also with the same C clasp. He's a little sparkly. So he, uh, he is also, I'm going to go with the, he and the, and the fish are probably both plastic. And then this little lapel pin of a little flower that's kind of like a plasticized petals. Um, but it's just got this little, this little stick pin. Uh, to it. It's like a little tiny lapel pin or, you know, would look great in a hat. Look at that. So I have this little collection of these four pins, super lightweight, going to be easy. They'll, I'll be able to put them in one of my hard sided uh, envelopes. So it should be able to ship for a first class stamp because it'll be less than a quarter of an inch thick and um, super lightweight. So the whole set of those little pins is five bucks. 
So $5 for the tiny little, the little set of small pins, $5 by giving me number 52. $5, 52 for the set of small pins. All right, going to something slightly larger. This I bought specifically to sell and I decided it was going to be a great item for this sale. Um, I don't know why, but it's all, it's light, it's lightweight, easy to ship and it's an, an inexpensive price. It is a little shaker style wooden box. But what makes this, I like the design. It has the lid that comes off, so it's actually a functional storage box. It's in really nice shape, really nice condition. I'm not 100% sure of its age, but what helps, and the reason I liked it, and the reason I picked it up, is it actually has the maker's mark on the bottom. So I tried to find it to see if I could figure out how old this was. I mean, these have been made, well, they were started in the 19th century, if not earlier. These are like tourist items, probably from the late 20th century, maybe 1980s, 90s. But it could be something that could have been sold yesterday. I have no idea. But it is from Berchtesgarten, which was one of those, wait, I think I know that name. Uh, that is where Hitler had his um, eagle's nest. Uh, so Berchtesgarten, Gaden, Gaden, I think there's no R, Berchtesgaden is where the box was made. And you can see there's a little uh, symbol of a horse with a sword kind of going down in the side. And then there's a burned mark that has that same silhouette of the horse with the sword. So I did do a little bit of digging. They are a woodsmith, you know, that they do these types of boxes. Again, primarily souvenir wear, but this is a particularly nicely made one. One, the paint is actually in great condition. They did a nice little antiquing aspect, you know, to give it to look like it has a little bit of age. Both the top and the base are decorated. And like I said, it is functional. So you can just use this for storage in any way. And the lid fits very nicely on top. It's very snug. Sometimes they're really loose. Um, so it's just, it was just a nice little piece. I picked it up for a good price. So as I typically do, if I get it, good for, get it for a good price, I pass it on at a good price. So I'm passing it on to you for 10 bucks. $10 for the Berchtus Garden uh, chip wood uh, painted, toll painted box. $10 by giving me number 32. $10, 32 for the box. All right. If you follow my channel for a while, you know I have a thing for coasters, but I kind of maybe wore out my welcome with coasters and I stopped selling them for a while because you know, to be perfectly honest, they really weren't selling all that often. And I decided I needed to really only pick up the ones that I thought were worthy of going to another home or worthy of being picked up or, well, let's be honest, something someone else would buy. So I haven't really been picking up as many coasters as late. Uh, people that bought mystery boxes definitely found coasters in their mystery boxes. But uh, what I did find this time and I decided I did want to pick up was this great pair of porcelain coasters. Because this goes into the cross category, even if you're not a coaster person, which I get, not everyone's like me, but if you want to protect your furniture, you know, you want something that's also going to be decorative. And with spring coming, I thought these two pieces with the floral designs were just beautiful colors. It most likely would have been part of a much larger collection of florals, but these two come from the Kaiser, Kaiser uh, Porcelain Manufactory. Uh, they are German and these are dated with a W Germany. So these are West German. So these, uh, you know, probably going into the 60s through the 80s, most likely would be when these would have been made. And you've got, hmm, this is where my botanical knowledge pretty much dies. Lilies of some sort. Does it say what it is? Well, it says lily. So I guess I could have cheated and just read it. So it just says lily. And what does this one say? This says something in German. Kuneminimum. Kuneminimum. Kuneminimum? No idea. Let me pull out my cheaters. K U N. No, is it K? Yeah. K U N E N A N E M O N E. They're making stuff up. Kuminanimini. Anemonimini? Okay, I'm not even making this up anymore. I can't say this. Kuninanimani. Kuninanimani. Okay, the ending kind of looks like sea anemone, but I don't know how to put the rest of that together. 
They kind of look like poppies. <laughs> I have no idea what these are. That may get edited out. Uh, anyway, we've got this great set of coasters, beautiful condition, no chips, no cracks. Uh, would look great on any uh, underplate for your coasters or as backdrop for any sort of spring display you're about to do. You can get the pair of coasters, Kaiser course, uh, coasters for 10 bucks for the pair by giving me number 63. All right, going to something I can pronounce, a brass box. All right, I can pronounce this. So this, I would say, has some age to it. Brass is difficult because it's kind of made the same way for you know years and years and years. So where you can start telling when brass is a little bit older is simply by the patina. And this just has a great, great patina on it. Now, Nate from Soul Nate would want to polish this. Um, that's your choice. I just liked this. I want to say this is either, it's designed to be, I think they're called cricket boxes. So it'd be like a little, uh, you'd have a, you put a cricket in there, it has the breathing holes so that you could listen to the music that the cricket made. Seems a little cruel, but you know, in the olden days, they didn't always think about being nice to animals or insects. So anyway, I think that's what these were designed, you know, to replicate. This is not anything that would be like 16th century or Ming dynasty. It's just simply a cool box. You do have lids uh, or holes on the top as well on the sides. So you could use this as a tea light candle. So you'd get some really cool flickering lights coming through the sides. Uh, or you could use this to burn incense because the bottom is also brass. So you're not really running the risk of setting anything on fire. So if you did that as an incense burner, you also, you have the holes that would let the incense go out. So, but it is designed, it has a little handle on it. It's just a cute little, and I really liked the shape. I've seen these fairly common. You know, this is something that, you know, more recently you could have gotten them at Pier 1, um, but they typically ended up being round or rectangular, you know, just a simple shape. I just liked the fact that this one had a very different shape to it. So I thought it was kind of cool to pick it up, and I'm picking up and offering it to you for 10 bucks. So $10 a little brass box. See how easy that was to say? 10 bucks, giving number 90. $10, number 90 for the little brass box. All right, <clears throat> another piece of metalware. This I loved. I fell in love with this. And I've any, if I had any intention of ever having a sewing collection, this would stay in my sewing collection. I owned a quilt store for 10 years with my ex-wife. I have no interest in having a sewing collection. So this I found and I'm passing this on for sale to you guys. So it is a little metal box with a pin cushion in the middle. Now, I don't know the age of this. It's not marked in any way. I'm guessing 60s, 70s. Um, it's old enough that the, the um, what do you call it? The padding, the filling in the pin cushion has really kind of settled down. Like there's very little in there. So the pins would have to kind of go in at an angle at this point or you may want to re try and refill that. But what makes this cool are the little containers. So you have the thimble or as somebody said in my Instagram post, a Dalek. Uh, you've got the little fasteners, you've got buttons, you've got, wait, what is that? Oh, I guess that's the thread. So you got like little bobbins of thread, pins, safety pins, and each of them has a, its own little uh, cover. So they really, they don't really lock into place. So this would be something if you, like if your cat knocked this off, the, the compartments will open, you know, so be aware. But it is cool. And if you have a sewing collection, even if you don't use it for the actual you know, utility, because of its shape, it would sit upright because it does have this flat edge. But it is designed, if you're trying to use it functionally, if you can kind of see here, there's the, the little, the little cardboard piece, it spins. So it is truly a functional piece. It's just, it's just, I'd never seen anything like it. I thought it was super cool. And again, got it at a decent price. So passing it on at what I think is a good price. $15 for the Sewing, Nation, Sewing Notions box. $15 by giving me number 45. $15.45 for the Sewing Notion box. All right. I mentioned the little jewelry that we're bringing back the brooch. And now I'm going to bring up the 
a bigger brooch. So this is, I'm still gonna call this a brooch, uh, but technically, I found these online and technically they're just calling it a clip. And some people are saying it's a hair clip. Uh, some people, uh, I mean, you, know, you could say it's a dress clip, you could try and say it's a shoe clip. I do only have one, so it'd probably be really weird as a shoe clip, unless you're a peg leg. Um, this is, I had, uh, we did a show last night, we pre-recorded it, and so the duo dive last night, uh, that premiered last night was with um, uh, Dolores from Miss, uh, DA, Miss Damn Jewelry, and I actually showed this on her channel, and it's jo uh, um, is it John or Joe? John Hardy, it is a signed piece, it's John Hardy, which makes it nice to find online. So there's a lot of these that were available. Um, and she said that if it was a dress clip or a shoe clip, that the teeth would be very jagged. It'd be something that would like latch on so it didn't come off. So the fact that it doesn't have the teeth means it's not designed to be definitely a shoe clip, um, that it is possibly a hair clip, or it is simply a decorative clip. And if I had a stronger collar, it would stay upright. So, you know, it could go in your pocket. Uh, she even showed, she said like if you had a jacket, you could slide things like this into the uh, button hole. If you're not buttoning the jacket, you can put it into the hole so that it sits in front of the button, which I thought was an ingenious idea. But anyway, there are a bunch of these online, which is why I'm not putting this online. There's a lot of competition. But because there's a lot online, I know what they go for. So they typically are going in the you know, like 20-ish dollar range. So I'm selling mine for 15 $15 for the John Hardy butterfly brooch, $15 by giving me number 19. $15, 19 for the butterfly brooch. All right, uh, next piece, we've got some vintage barware. And this is a uh, collection of just, I guess, they, I guess they'd be considered cocktail picks. They're too short to be swizzle sticks. So they're, and they have the little spike at the bottom. So like maybe they would have been, you put your cherry on, maybe this would have sat in your drink. I mean, these are really nice, more than just the toothpicks that you'd grab a crudite with. Um, so these are just a cool uh, little set. They're all the same height. And so I know the way they're made, they're, I'm assuming they're all from the same set. There is a set of eight. I do not know if this is the complete set, but Eight's a typical number for a set. So you've got the heart. You've got a ladybug. You've got a deer. You've got, who put, thought to put this on a piece? A chimney sweep. Chimney sweeps are supposed to be good luck. You've got a trunk up elephant, but that's okay. We can show him love too. We've got a four leaf clover. Actually, is it four leaf? Yeah, four leaf clover. We have a butterfly. And we have what appears to be a pelican. So it's just a little odd collection, but I thought they were kind of fun. Uh, picked them up, selling them. It's a, they're a buck a piece, so selling as a set. They're eight bucks. Eight dollars for the set of vintage cocktail sticks. Eight bucks, number 15. Eighteen dollars, or if eight dollars, number 15 for the cocktail set. All right, uh, next item I have is, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see uh, things um, that I'm promoting. This was the other brooch that I had put on. This one's much, much smaller. You can see this by size. He is, by every indication, everyone tells me he is a swallow. So I do not know necessarily, I guess because of the shape of the back uh, tail uh, is how you know that it is a swallow, uh, regardless. Uh, this also, I think I showed, I don't know if I showed it on camera or not, but when I worked, talked to Dolores, I showed this to her and we were trying to figure out its age. Based on the back, it does appear to be riveted. So it does appear to be something that does have some age to it, but you can see the metal is exactly shaped by the shape of the bird. And I thought the top of it was wood or something like that. And she said it's probably enamel. And if I hold it just the right way, I don't normally film during the day, so I struggled with my light setup today and it's not working as well as I would have liked. Uh, and I don't have a shiny, bright light. But you can, kind of, you can kind of see, if I hold it that way, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a reflection against it. So there is a shininess to it. So she may be right that it is enamel. I do not know. 
I just think it's super sweet. It is very small. It has a beautiful, beautiful coloration to it with the blue and the black and then very nicely done. Uh, I show the detail of his face in Instagram as well. So I might try and drop a couple of those photos here uh, to show showcase a little bit. Um, but it's just a cute little brooch. Bring back the brooch and you do so in this little sweet animal form of a swallow. You can do so for $10. $10 for the little swallow brooch by giving me number seven. $10, number seven for the little swallow brooch. All right, and the last item I'm going to include, uh, because I, my live sales have been a little off lately. We were doing some as chat. Sometimes I was just too tired and they rambled, who knows. Um, I did want to reintroduce the mystery boxes, but because this is a pre-recorded sale, I'm not going to do a traditional mystery box. I will start doing a, my regular sale. will go back to 8 p.m. Eastern on Thursday starting next week, and I will have a traditional sale with my traditional mystery boxes. But for now, um, what I'm doing is I'm going to include the option to pick up my mini mystery packs. And if you're not familiar with my mini mystery packs, they are in, I actually have them preset. There are several of these have been already been made. They go out in a little bubble mailer and they are a collection of approximately 12 to 15 items that are a collection of ephemera and smalls. In general, it's typically not anything that'll break because it's just going out into a bubble mailer. Uh, so it's easy for me to pack these. So there is quite a bit of an ephemera in there. Uh, probably half of it, if not a little bit more than half, will be ephemera of some sort. But I also try and throw some other stuff in there to make it interesting. So if you are interested in, I know you always get one of my coasters as part of it. Uh, so if you are interested in a mini mystery pack, I will do up to 25 of these. So if you've gotten this far into the video and you haven't claimed anything, or even if you have, go ahead and claim the, um, you can grab a mystery pack. They are $15, $15 includes the shipping. So it's just a flat $15. Go ahead and put into the comments the first 25 people that claim them. I will turn the comments off after a while, so this is not gonna run forever but at least for the next couple of days until I accumulate 25 solds. The first 25 people that want one of my mini mystery packs, you will be able to grab one for $15. And to grab that, put in the comments number 23. Number 23 in the comments gets you a mini mystery pack. Again, just make sure you send me your address so that I can know uh, where to ship it. Because this time shipping is included. Um, so that's any place in the United States because I'm using, it'll be under a pound. So I'm using first class uh, US Postal Service. So it doesn't really matter where you are, but I do need to know where to send it. So uh, that's it. That is my entire live sale and try to keep this to a half an hour. It looks like I might actually have done that. So if you, uh, again, see anything uh, that you liked, hopefully you were commenting as you went. If not, go ahead and comment now. Uh, grab whatever you would like to claim. The next video up again is Skunky Junk. That's Sean at Skunky Junk. His video goes up at 11.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, mine would have gone live. If you were watching this at the time they went live, would have gone live at 11. But again, go into the, the description of the video. I will have links to all of the individuals who participated in my evening of Shop Hop Drop Sales and you can go back and watch all of their videos as well. In most cases, everyone's video is going to be a half an hour, if not less, so they should be fairly easy to crank through. And if there's anybody that you don't know, please subscribe to them, maybe tell them you heard about them through me. And uh, I, really, I really wanna support all of my friends that helped me do this event. And if you're in the um, theater tradition, I hope you're all wishing me broken legs because uh, by the time you've seen this, I will have already had opening night, but I do have performances through the rest of the weekend. So I am Mr. Wormwood in Matilda, the musical. I will drop a photo of what I look like. I have beautiful green hair. So I will uh, send, close it off now. Again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for participating in my drop sale and thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.